During this tutorial we're going to join images into a background. When GIMP opens for the first time it may look like this. If it does, we can drag the top title bar and move each window into the middle of the screen. And we also need our photos folder. I have my photos folder here on the desktop. And now I'm going to open my photos and find a background image. Background is always the first image we use. I'm going to open my sunsets folder by double clicking on it. If your images look like this, we can just left click on this icon here and then on thumbnails. And I'm going to choose a nice background now. And, uh, I have one in mind but I can't find it. Where is it? There it is right there. Drag that one over. And now we have a nice background to work on. I'm going to adjust the uh, percentage tool here. I'm going to zoom out slightly. Click on that one. Click on 75. And now I can adjust this little area here to make it disappear by dragging the bottom right corner of the window. And I can move it over like that. If this is still too small for you, we can actually click into here and choose our own percentage. I'm going to click in there and choose 75 because we don't have 75 in the list here. Left click into that box, drag it over and type 75. and then we press enter on the keyboard like that. Now I can drag this bottom corner again. We can move the layer panel over if we need to give ourselves more room. Now we can see the the whole background there. And now we're going to drag a subject over. I'm going to left click on my picture folder here which is still open behind this window. Now I can see my pictures. I'm going to click on the back button. I'm going to find a subject which is in the portraits folder. I'm going to drag this person over. And then I'm just going to minimize my picture folder. No, I don't have to. Okay, now I'm going to resize this person who's way too big. Click on my scale tool. And I'm also going to click on Keep Aspect. The reason we do that is to avoid squashing the subject or stretching the subject when we scale him. And there we go. I'm going to continue to drag downwards. And I'm going to click on Scale to finish that process. And then I'm going to move my subject into the corner here. Click on the move tool. Drag directly on top of him. Drag him over. Looks like he's still too big. Click on the scale and drag it down. Just keep in mind if you do not use scale, this eraser will not be activated and we will be needing the eraser next. You need to click on scale to activate the eraser. Okay, click on scale to finish. I'm going to move him again. Click on move, drag him over to the corner. Now we need to remove his background here. The easiest way to do that is to zoom in on that area first, which will make it easier to remove. Click on our zoom tool and drag a square over that area. Now we can start to remove this background. Click on the eraser. We need to have a soft edge to our eraser. We're going to click on this icon here. And uh, we're going to click on one of these little fuzzy circles. And now we're going to drag around the outside of his, his head there. Getting nice and close to his head. 
the closer you get to the subject's outline, the better it will look in the end. So we would go around his whole body and we would just drag this up and down so we can get up and up and down so we can move around the, the subject and we would go all the way down until we've gone right around the outside once we've gone around the outside we can zoom back out and we're going to click on 100% there and if I had more time I would go around the outside so now we need to remove these large areas here and we do that just by adjusting the scale tool nice and big and then just drag around the outside and as you can see it's a lot easier to erase the background than the scale tool is nice and big or well, the eraser is nice and big I should say and I have another one here that I prepared earlier I'll show that to you I'm going to hide this one and show you the one I've done earlier here he is and I'm going to add another subject here click on my pictures and to drag Charles over and I'm going to do exactly the same thing I'm going to scale him a little bit first scale activates the eraser which we will need next click on scale also resizes subject of course and we can move him over if we need to with the move tool move him to any position we like and first thing zoom in on the area we want to erase click on our eraser and let's adjust the scale make it a bit smaller the outline of that circle is the size of the eraser there you can see it's too big at the moment drag it down a little bit that's better and we would do the same thing, we would go around the outside nice and close to the subject and then once we've gone right around the outside of the subject zoom out a little bit click on our zoom tool and then about a hundred percent and all we do is scale and make it a little bit bigger as you can see the scale tool is a lot bigger now which makes it easier to remove all these big bits here we need to get rid of and I'll just move him over a bit and I'll show you another one I prepared earlier there he is and it's basically just doing that with uh, any other subjects you want to add into the picture so I'll show you the other pictures I've uh, I prepared earlier got the baby up there and we've got that person got that person we've also got some seagulls there as you can see here the baby is slightly transparent the way we perform that effect is just by clicking on the baby layer we have here and then we just drag the opacity slider bar either left or right, left will make the subject more transparent, right will do the opposite so I'm going to have the baby as though he's floating in the clouds and looking at the seagulls and that's it, if you want to get rid of the yellow outline here we click on the background layer and as you can see here, there's no outline last thing we need to do is save click on file save as and when you use GIMP for the first time you don't see the locations here and to make them display we just click on this little symbol here next to browse and now we can see our locations I'm going to save it to the desktop so I'm going to click on desktop and now I'm going to type a name for my picture
and then we've got dot xcf when you save a picture with dot xcf it will actually save all of the layers as well so you can close the picture and come back later on and continue to work on it after you've opened it so xcf on the end here will save your layers when you've completely finished with the picture and you're deciding you don't want to work on it anymore we put dot jpg on the end of the file name and when it's a jpg you've completely finished and you can give it off to somebody as a present maybe or email it or print it out or do whatever you like with it so the last thing I need to do is click on the save button here when my mouse is turned invisible I can see it's hard to see click on save and I've already saved this picture before so it's asking me to replace it so I'll click on replace click on export click on save and that's basically it now I can close GIMP and my image should be on the desktop here here it is that's my XCF version as you can see the icons are different and if I want to come back and work on the same picture later I can just open this one and I'll have all my layers there that I can adjust if I need to and I'm going to open my picture here by double left clicking on top of it and there it is and that's how we join images to a background and remove the the subjects background as you saw